chapter five, who should I counsel? As a realtor and a practicing professional, your counseling efforts should extend to various different parties, or maybe a better way to look at it is the different types of clients. Once again, your job as a counselor is to ensure a smooth and successful process, which ultimately leads to a closing of your client. So here are some of the key parties that you should consider counseling. The first one obviously is the buyer client. You're going to do a needs assessment with them. So you're going to counsel on their preferences, their budget, specific requirements. Uh, you're going to counsel them on market education. What's the trend going on? What's the con market condition? You might counsel them on financing. Uh, what's their best options? You might point them towards your favorite lending institution or mar uh, mortgage loan originator. A second person you would counsel is obviously the other one we've talked about is the seller. You're going to do a goals assessment. What's their goals for this sale? Is it timeline? Is it money? And you're going to help set the expectation for their property. You might counsel them on property enhancements. What do they need to fix? What do they need to upgrade? What don't they need to fix? And you might uh, counsel them on pricing strategies. You know, what's a realistic uh, listing price for that property in that neighborhood, in that market condition, in that property condition? Another client you might uh, counsel to is an investor, right? You're, you may have to provide in-depth marketing analysis for investors to help them identify what properties are going to be strong potential acquisitions for rental income, or maybe it's a strong acquisition for appreciation in a neighborhood. You're going to have to counsel them on risk mitigation. Uh, what are there going to be the potential risk and returns associated with each one of these specific properties? You may counsel them on their long-term strategy. You may have to help them develop an investment strategy so that it aligns with their financial goals. Is it to build a portfolio for retirement? Is it to build a portfolio to buy and sell and get quick capital? All of these things. Another potential client, we're going to throw this in maybe slightly different, are first-time homebuyers. First-time home buyers, I know there are plenty of people out there that love first-time home buyers. I don't particularly like dealing with first-time home buyers, and that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother course. But as a counselor, you may have to counsel a first-time home buyer on the entire home buying process. You may have to explain each step by step by step and provide guidance along the way to warn them about potential challenges, uh, opportunities, pitfalls. So there is a lot of education that goes into the first time home buyer as a counselor. You might also have to counsel them on any government programs that could be out there. Um, inform them on the available FHA loans or buyer assistance loans or buyer down payment loans or how to ask the seller for in uh, concessions. So these are all the things that you might talk about with a first time home buyer. Number five would be the relocation client because with the relocation client, you're going to have to counsel them on community information. You may have to provide detailed information about new communities, schools, uh, amenities, local services. You may also help counsel them on logistical support. How do they relocate? Can you give them guidance on the moving process? How about local resources to help them move? So those are all would be something that you would use for a relocation. Empty nesters, you may have to counsel them on transition planning, going from a larger home to a smaller home, going from one state to another state. And that would involve maybe market insights of other states other specific property types. You know, maybe they're going from a single family home to a condo. 
there is a transition process in there that deals with insurance differentiation, deals with, you know, just the physical stuff a person may have. Uh, you may have to guide them on how to divest themselves of their 13 bedrooms of all their furniture. Divorcees w would be the next one. This is a, obviously a sensitive counseling position because you are going to have to involve a, maybe a lot more empathy and sensitivity because they have huge emotional challenges that accompany any divorce, all right? Um, there could be legal aspects with divorcees that you may have to guide them to a legal counselor to make sure that they're getting what they deserve. Uh, you may have to assist in the equitable property division of the real estate asset and provide navigation uh, techniques to these people. So you could say, OK, well, you've got five rental properties. We have to talk to an attorney about which ones can you take, which ones can you give away? Can you split them equitably? All kinds of things. The next one would be a commercial client and a commercial client. You may have to do a business needs assessment, you know, such as what is the retail space you need? Is there an office layout? Is there industrial specifications like railroad access or highway access for logistics purposes? You may have to guide them on zoning and regulatory issues. What is the zoning regulation they need versus what is the one they're looking at? You talk may talk about permitting process and other relevant commercial considerations. Remember that effective counseling builds this trust and it establishes that long term relationship. We've talked about it. I beat this dead horse, but you have to understand that by understanding those unique needs specific to each one of those parties, that's going to position yourself as a trusted advisor, increasing the likelihood of a, a, a successful deal, B, return business, and C, referrals from that client.